This is panel 7, tidal volume against ventilation. The tidal volume on the y-axis and ventilation on the x-axis. When data points move directly from left to right, this is an indication that ventilation is increasing as a result of breathing frequency only. As seen here, the tidal volume isn't changing much from 4 litres, yet the ventilation is increasing. This leads to a common misconception that data points moving up are an illustration of tidal volume increasing without an increase in breathing frequency. However, you can see in this example, if the data points were to follow this arrow, the tidal volume would have increased to 4 litres, but the ventilation wouldn't have increased at all. This, in fact, is an example of breathing frequency decreasing. Instead, if we see data points moving directly out of the origin of this graph, this is an example where ventilation is increasing as a result of just tidal volume and no breathing frequency increases. This is why, by convention, two isopleths for breathing frequency are plotted on the graph, the upper one at 20 breaths a minute and the lower one at 50 breaths a minute. This is because these are rates where the patient usually starts at and adults will rarely get past 50 breaths a minute. We can also put the inspiratory capacity on the graph and the maximum voluntary ventilation. And this will help bound the patient's breathing reserve, which is usually 15 to 20 percent down from maximum voluntary ventilation. What we can see in this example is the patient has started to incur on that breathing reserve and is getting close to reaching their maximum ventilation. This may be indicative of a degree of ventilation limitation. The normal response is similar to what is seen, an increase primarily in tidal volume before a switch over to breathing frequency to increase ventilation in the latter portion of the test. An initial increase in tidal volume may indicate a degree of dynamic hyperinflation and obstructive patients may well increase their tidal volume but be unable to increase their breathing frequency as the increased intrathoracic pressure results in a collapse of small airways and a significant feeling of dyspnea, which may, re may result in the end of the test. On the other side of the scale, restrictive patients will show little or no increase in tidal volume and a very early shift to increased breathing frequency and probably exceed the expected breathing frequency of 50 breaths a minute. If the pattern doesn't follow these general patterns, but instead shows a different type of shape or even no relation to one another and quite a chaotic spread, this may be indic indicative of a degree of dysfunctional breathing.